So in this video, I'm going to be testing out 10 different types of primers to see what works best with the new Army Painter Speed Paint 2.0. I'll be testing out a couple of metallics, a whole range of different primers to see which ones they basically stick to the best, avoid any cracking like I experienced in my last one, and just telling you which ones seem to work best, at least in my experience of all of these ones that I've tested. So whenever it comes to anything like speed paints or contrast paints, whenever you do a video, you get people asking what it looks like over like a metallic or what happens if you use it over a different type of primer. So I was hoping to kind of find out what one works best as like a general primer, but also as well, if you want to go for something like an effect over a gold or a silver, what that's actually going to look like across all of the different colors. So the first thing that I did is I went off and I printed off like 500 of these Space Marine helmets. So that way I had something to test off. And the idea was that I would test all 49 of the new colors over each and every single one of these primers that I'm going to be using. Now obviously one of the big driving forces for me doing this video as well is that historically I have always used a Liquitex ink over a black. So I normally use the black air primer from Army Painter through my airbrush and then use Liquitex over it, over the top of it. And historically this has always been fine for like Speed Paint 1.0 for my contrast paint or any other type of paints I've used. But with the latest Speed Paint set there was a cracking issue that I experienced in my previous video. Now the interesting thing about this is Army Painter reached out to me at the same time as I reached out to them just to kind of figure it out and have a bit of a chat about it and just go through some results. So in this video, it's going to be a relatively long one, hopefully a dive into some different bits and what works, what doesn't work, and I'll have everything timestamped below. So they got in contact at the same time I was trying to get in contact with them. And we ended up having a really interesting meeting where they explained a little bit more about the new speed paints, how they're working, that new drying time, how it is faster to get over the reactivation issues and everything else like that. And they did confirm a few things obviously that I found in a previous video. And one of the courses is this Liquitex ink. It is a more glossy type finish. And you'll always see that in any of the videos that I've done beforehand, it gives me quite a glossy finish. Historically, not been an issue, but with the new recipe of Speed Paint 2.0, because they are drying faster, it's causing it to kind of pull apart. Now, I don't mix this with anything. A lot of people ask me, you know, do you mix it with like a matte medium? Haven't. But in this video, I am going to be mixing it with some matte medium to see if that makes a difference. So I had a really interesting chat with the guys over at Army Painter, talked a little bit more about it, and I explained what I wanted to do further just to do some more testing. And I wanted to test out all the different colors over all these different primers. Now, at this point in the last video, I purchased that Speed Paint set. So I'd gone out with my own money, bought it. I had no relationship at all with Army Painter previously. And I'd returned it after my last video purely because for me it wasn't working with the findings that I had in that video. So full disclosure at this point Army Painter did agree to send out another box of the speed paint. Reason being is A it allowed me to do some further deep testing to follow up to my previous video but also as well it would help to rule out whether or not I was having an issue and I got like a bad batch of speed paints. So now that's out there I'm sure some people in the comments will turn around and say this is now a biased video because I've been sent a free box of speed paints and all of that but at the end of the day I'm just here to hopefully kind of clear up some of the things I found and let you guys know what works best with these new speed paints because at the end of the day they are some of my favorite paints the 1.0 so I was really really excited with the 2.0 when they came out a whole range of new colors getting rid of the reactivation issue so I wanted these to work and in my last video Although on some primers it did seem to work, I was having issues with them. So I wanted to clear that up and figure out what is going to work best. So that way you guys can have the best buying decision you possibly can. Because the way I did conclude my last video was that for me they weren't working. And I would recommend holding fire on your buying decision until you figured out whether or not your primer would work and your way of working would work with these new speed paints. And if it did, then they were worthwhile investing in. So hopefully in this video I will be able to tell you what kind of primers work best and what's going to make this buying decision easier for you. So spoiler alert, they did crack with the 50% medium and my Liquitex inks. So I'll get that straight out of the way there. But for the vast majority of these other ones, they didn't crack, which is good news because it means that they do work when you use them with the correct primer. I'll also have my temperature and humidity up on screen here now for you to see as well. I believe it's around about 21 degrees Celsius in the UK. I think off the top of my head, it was about 43% humidity as well. The reason I'm including that is because humidity and temperature and climate and all of that can have an effect on things like speed paint or just paint in general. If it's too hot, for example, and things are drying out too quickly, it can then cause paint to crack, not adhere correctly, and all of that stuff. So there's loads of things that can cause this. So just in case I got any anomalies where it caused everything to go wrong, it's worthwhile having it there. So I printed off the 500 heads. And honestly, this was one of the most tedious things in the world because I then had to print them all off, break them off the supports, get them all cleaned up, get them all cured. And you might be wondering why the hell did I print off 500 heads? Surely I'd only have to do a couple to test out the different primers. The reason being is I wanted to have a better idea of what worked. 
For example, if I got a couple of them and they cracked, then that doesn't necessarily give me an indication as to whether or not that's cracking over all of the primers. It could just be that you've got two particular speed paints in that set that are causing it to crack over a certain primer. It could also be the time of the day. If it's really, really hot at the time I'm trying to do it, it could then be cracking because it's drying faster. So by having all 50 for all of the different colors, it gives me a much, much better indicator and a bigger sample size to see if something is going wrong and if it is consistent through the entire set on that primer, or if it's not. So that way, hopefully it should be a little bit more reliable. So I got them all printed off and then I had to get them all primed up. So I went with this cardboard method. So I basically stuck them all down in rows of 10 and then I started priming. And the idea behind this is it means that I can match up all of the different colors on here with the way they're laid out on my desk as well. So that way I can look at one of these, figure out what order number it is, and then go back to it. So that way if I see any consistent issues with one particular helmet cracking all the time, I'll know that that speed paint over all of the primers was cracking or they're not cracking. So it helps me again to identify any anomalies. Got them all stuck down, got them all primed up. And at this stage, there were a few that were standing out to me and I actually really liked the look of this. So this is the Army Painter Beige. So the primers that I've used for this, so I've used this Army Painter Beige in the can. I use this Army Painter Metallic Primer as well, which I had kicking around for quite some time. The Retributor Armor by Citadel. And also by Citadel as well, I used Wraith Bone because obviously that's one of the classic ones to use for things like contrast paints. I went back to the Air Primer by Army Painter, and this is one that I used in the previous one that did cause some cracking. So figured it'd be interesting to see if I get that same result over all 50 of the heads. And then moving on to some that you guys also recommended that I try out as well. So I use Pro Acryl, and I have all of these linked down below as well. So if you like one of these, then by all means head on over. I used this Vallejo primer as well through the airbrush. I used this AK Interactive, and this is like a primer and micro filler. This went on really nicely. And I used this Tamiya primer as well. And then finally, of course, I went and used my Liquitex ink over the black primer that I already had. And I did a 50-50 mix of this with some matte medium as well to see whether or not I'd get rid of some of that glossiness and fix the issue, which it doesn't, unfortunately. So I got them all primed and then I left them. So I didn't want to jump in too quickly and then risk destroying the prime. So they were all left for 24 hours. So that prime would well and truly set and everything at this stage would be cured. Once everything was dry, took them all across into my office and that's when I started painting. And this is the point where I wanted to give up. I, I started painting it and they're obviously they're quite hard to get to because of the way I've lined them all up and I slopped it on there. And one thing that people might be screaming at me in the comments is you're slopping it on there, that's not the way you paint and all of that. But it was consistent across all of them. So I put pretty much the exact same amount of paint on every single one of these helmets to try and keep it as consistent as possible. Obviously there's gonna be a margin of human error there. Maybe some of them get a little bit more, some of them get a little bit less. And again, that's why I went with the 50 heads, so that way I could test them all out. And that way, if I slosh too much on one and not enough on the next one, I'd be getting something relatively consistent by the time I got to the end of painting all of these. So I got them all painted up, and that took me hours. I mean, this, at first in my head, I figured it wouldn't take me that long, but actually painting 500 heads, oh my God, it was incredibly, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So that's, that's the sounds I was making once I was done with that. So at this stage, I got them all painted up. Okay, so I have just finished painting up all almost 500 of these Space Marine heads and oh, that was a, a lot of work. However, I've got my results in, so they are all done. There's just a selection of them. I'm now gonna quickly do like a blind test of the ones that I think look best in terms of like the consistency. So how well, how well it's covered over like those smooth areas and how well it's kind of then sunk into all of the deeper recesses as well. It's as blind as it can be, because I don't know what the actual primer is for these. It's written underneath them, so I, I did make a marking there. But I won't look at that, I won't cheat, and then I'll leave them for some time. So I want to leave them for like at least 12 hours to really set, so that way if there is any tinkering that's happening in the background that maybe causes them to crack or pull away, then we should see that. I think at this early stage, I'm seeing what ones do crack, so it, spoiler alert, the um, Liquitex even mixed with the matte medium it pretty much cracked on every single one of them. However, at first glance, it hasn't cracked on anything else. The only place I'm seeing some small cracks so far is in the Army Painter Grey Air, and that's only in the bits where I've applied it too heavily. But everything else at the moment, touch wood, is looking perfect. So we will see, I'll get these marked up and then I will pick up 
the very near future. So I went through and obviously I did the blind test that I just spoke about there. And the one that came out at like glance when I was comparing them all and going through them, I came up with this order. So the first one was the AK Interactive. So these ones came out, in my opinion, the best looking out of all of them. And to be honest, there's not much between them. First up, let's talk about the only ones that did crack. So I left them all again for another 24 hours since I was done. The ones that cracked were the Liquitex ink mixed with the matte medium. And this was pretty consistent. So if I grab these, almost every single one of these cracked. And in fact, I don't think a single one. The yellows are okay-ish. One of the yellows is a little bit cracked. But for the most part, every single one of these cracked and it cracked on like the top of the helmet, on like the front nip just above the visor as well. There was a lot of cracking there. And what I did find, and you might be able to see this in this time lapse that I'll throw up on here, is that it didn't crack straight away. It wasn't as though it was going on there and you could see the paint separate. It was as it dried out, it then started to pull apart. So the Liquitex ink, and if this is a method you've been using for your priming in the past, when it's used raw, or if it's mixed with like a 50-50 mix of matte medium and the Liquitex ink, I had zero luck at all. I just couldn't get it to work. So if you are that kind of person who's primed like I do in the past, it's time to find a new primer if you're gonna be using this set. So that's worthwhile knowing, obviously going into this. So that was yeah, basically destroyed. The only other one that gave any slight issue was that gray, which is what I had an issue with in my previous one. Now this wasn't anywhere near as bad as the Liquitex ink. So the only place this had any kind of cracking is where it was pooling. So where that paint had pooled, like around the kind of rims of the visor and everything else, there was a little bit too much paint there and it ever so slightly cracked. This doesn't happen in any of the other primers that I've used. So that's quite interesting to know. So I know people were saying, well, you put it on there too heavily. That didn't happen with any of the other primers. So you didn't have to worry about how much you put on there. So just something worthwhile noticing. Uh, whether or not that has a slightly glossy texture to it or whatever it is, there was some slight cracking. However, at first glance, you cannot see it. It's not as though I look at that like I do with the Liquitex one and go, oh, yeah, that's, that's really cracked. You have to really, really be looking for it. But it also brings to question, you know, something like the Orc that I did in the previous video. That was done using this grey primer here. And obviously that Orc had a lot more texture on it, unlike this, which is a lot smoother. So that's probably why it showed up so much more on that previous orc. On these, it's a much harder thing to find because it's a much smoother surface. So there's that. So the Liquitex ink and the gray primer, the Liquitex ink is basically ruled out completely. The gray primer, not actually too bad, but there are some issues with it. Everything else though, worked perfectly. So that AK Interactive one, really good. Everything stands out very nicely. The colors really pop, they're very, very vibrant. And there's a decent amount of contrast on these as well. Now, one thing I mentioned in the previous video was there wasn't as much contrast on these compared to Speed Paint 1.0. And when I spoke to the guys over at Army Painter, they did confirm, obviously, that is one of the issues there because the previous ones would stay wet for longer, which means it could seep into all of those cracks and crevices, whereas the new one, it does dry faster. And that's to help avoid that reactivation issue. So there was a trade-off there, but actually there is a lot of contrast on these when you're using them over that nice bright primer. It really, really makes those colors pop. And when it builds into those kind of like low recessed areas, you get a nice amount of shadow. And I've got to say, I really like that. And in the second place between that and the AK Interactive Primer was Wraith Bones, so the Citadel one. And I guess you'd kind of expect this because it's made specifically to be used with like their contrast paint. So ultimately it can be quite similar to the way that you're using these paints as well. So Wraith Bone was really nice. It was almost in first, but on some of them, there was just a little bit too much pooling on those softer surfaces that I wasn't really getting with the AK Interactive. So the AK Interactive really helped it to move from those top surfaces where you didn't want it to pool. The Wraithbone didn't do it quite as well, but it was very, very close. In third place was the Army Painter Beige. So this Brain Matter Beige, which Army Painter were kind enough to send over to me, and this is a rattle cam one. It's a really odd, color is this kind of like greeny white beige thing but i've got to say it worked really really well again like with wraith bones very close to that but there are a couple of areas where it did pull a little bit more than i'd like it to but it wasn't too far off and in fourth place was the tamia primer as well again a little rattle cam there made all the colors pop some of the areas it pulled a little bit more than I'd like, but again, a really nice primer to use. And you, the thing that I found with these, you can't really go wrong with pretty much any of these. They all came out looking really nice. In fifth place was Pro Acryl. 
And again, this one was really nice, but I did find on this one there was quite a bit more pooling, like the tops of the visors, it wasn't always quite as smooth as the other primers that I had on there. So this one fell into a solid fifth, it's not bad, but it's not quite as good as the other ones. And then in a last place in a solid six was the Vallejo primer, which again, not bad, made the colors pop, things look good, but it was weird. The colors didn't quite get to where they should have been. So like all of the helmets on all the other ones, there's quite a nice transitional gradient between just above the visor through to the tops. On this one, there's a lot more like a muddy pooling. So it's all separated in weird places and it's not quite fit as nicely as I'd like. I would say the Vallejo one I would rule out at this stage, just for the way that I'm painting anyway. All of the other ones gave quite a nice transition between that dark to light. This one, not as much. So if you are thinking of buying one to go through your airbrush, the AK Interactive one, really good. And then if you wanted to use something like a rattle can, honestly, the Wraith Bone is a really good one to go for. So moving across onto the metallics. And for some crazy reason, I decided to go with gold and with silver. Silver's always a nice color to use with things like contrast paints or army paint or speed paints because they really make them pop. It gives it this really nice, vibrant metal color. And I've got to say, the silver stands out on pretty much every single one of these. I was really happy with pretty much every color that I used on the silver. I could definitely see myself using that for this like more magical armor and then not having to do too much. You could do a dry brush of silver over the top of all of these and they would look pretty damned fantastic. I also used the metallics over all of them as well. And the bronze speed paint over a silver base coat looks really nice because it's almost done at this stage. You still get a lot of those bright silvers poking through, so it gives it this really nice edge highlighting with the bronze. Really like the way all of the silvers turned out. The gold, not so much. It's interesting with the gold. It's a more muted matte type metallic. So you can still at first glance look at every single one of the colors and go, Okay, yeah, that's meant to be a metallic, and it reads and registers as a metallic, but a more dull and muted one. So I guess if you're going for like a fantasy miniature that had some rusty armor and stuff like that, it works if you don't want it to be too shiny, and you could definitely give it a dry brush of maybe a silver or another gold over top. However, if you're wanting just to use these as an effect over a gold that you've already painted on, things like, I think it's the orc skin at the top here, it gives it this really nice effect, so it does look like it's all rusted, and if you dry brush that with a silver, it would look fantastic. The metallic's over the top as well, so the bronze looks okay. It's got a bit of edge highlighting coming through. The others don't really stand out that much, so the silver over the gold doesn't work, and the yellows over the gold don't particularly work either. But things like some of these greens look fantastic over the gold, and you could definitely have a lot of fun with it. The reds look good as well. Like I said, if you want a more dull metallic effect, the gold's actually quite a good one to go over with with these speed paints. So in conclusion, I guess here we are with all the different primers and tested them out. And it is really interesting to see that different primers don't necessarily work with that. I guess that's to be expected. They can't test every single primer out there to see how it works. And sacrifices have to be made somewhere if you want to get a different thing out of it. And ultimately the big thing that they wanted to get around was that reactivation issue because that was the one thing that everybody seemed to be calling out with speed paint 1.0. If you've watched my videos in the past, I actually really liked the reactivation. It made it so much easier to blend those highlights into the layer beneath it. So I really liked the reactivation issue, but I know a lot of people hated it. They didn't like working with it because there was this reactivation issue. So in order to fix that, they've got this new formula out there. So there's going to be some trade-offs there. I can definitely say that that reactivation issue has 100% been fixed. I've not seen it anywhere else. And I've thrown a lot at these paints in testing to see whether or not I can get them to reactivate. And I, I haven't been able to. So they've definitely fixed that. So the big thing that people wanted to be changed in this is they wanted more colors, which they've delivered. They wanted to fix the reactivation issue, which they have also definitely delivered as well. So two big pros there. A lot of colors to choose from. the really nice and vibrant, especially when you use them over a nice bright white primer. And I've got to say, once you actually use it with a primer that works with these, then they are a fantastic set of paints. Obviously, when I did my review video, I concluded that it was worthwhile hanging fire just a little bit, checking forums, checking future YouTube videos, and just keeping an eye on things to see whether or not this issue was more widespread and whether or not it would work with a particular primer that you were using. Honestly, I feel as though we're in a position now where we know what was causing that. So if it's a more glossy type primer, the paint doesn't stick to it particularly well and it can cause some cracking. People were telling me in the comments as well, there were some other YouTubers that were doing things like using a hairdryer on them, which caused some cracking with them. So if you try to make them dry faster, you'll probably cause some cracking issues as well. So we know what causes that. And the great thing is now that this video is here and I'm sure there's hundreds of others out there as well that use different primers that have recommended different primers as well. 
We know what primers work with these paints, so that should get around any issues that come up with the cracking side of things. So now that we're armed with all of this different information, they're worthwhile picking up if you need that expansion to your original speed paints. If you're new to the hobby and you want a decent set, it's worthwhile give them a go. Ultimately, at the end of the day, all you can do is find out how well they work with your setup at home, with the primers that you use, the paints that you're using as well. If there's some colors that really stand out to you, then maybe pick some of those up, test them out, see how they work with your setup and your workflow because everybody does things differently. So I hope that video has helped and you can now decide what sort of primer would work best with the speed paint set. Honestly, this AK Interactive Primer is really really nice the other thing i really liked about it is it goes beautifully through my airbrush as well it didn't require any thinning i just sloshed it in there it's really runny it's almost like the liquitex ink it's not quite as thin as that but it goes through the airbrush really nice it didn't cause any clogging i didn't have to really do too much cleanup so I'm really happy with this. I think I found my new primer. So I guess one great thing's come of this. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are there any other primers that you've used with Speed Paint 2.0 that really, really work? So that way people know and they can help form their buying decision about what primers they're gonna work with. And also, are there any primers that you've used that cause any other unforeseen issues or stuff that I haven't come up against yet? Because again, that would be really nice to know. So that way someone doesn't go off and buy the wrong primer and then have a set and just, you know, end up with an issue there. Hopefully that's given you a good enough idea what's gonna work, what doesn't work, yeah. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the future. Bye.